You know, we get so wrapped up talking about games on this channel that sometimes we forget about the most important thing that goes into those games, and that's the console. What's going on, everyone? I'm Jay, my channel Square Pegs. A couple of weeks ago, my friend Waves and Games, link is up there right now. Please be sure to click that card and check his channel out. He did a video looking at his most visually appealing consoles in his collection, and he did a top five, and I thought it was really good. But as it is me, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, so we're not going to look at five. Oh no, we are looking at ten. We're going to kick this video off with handheld systems. I've been using handheld systems since I was a kid. I had a launch Game Boy as much as I love that one. The Game Boy that I love the most from that classic line, this one right here, the Game Boy Color. Now this is a lime green one. I had the lime green one when I was younger. And this is one I recently reacquired at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Now there's a lot of stuff to really like about this. I love that cartridges sit flush on it. I love the slight curve on the back where the battery pack is. It just makes it a little bit more ergonomical to hold. It's something that I really dig. And I just, I really like just the simplicity of this. Like it's, it's a no frills system. It works perfectly well. It does exactly what it needs to. And it's something that I still use today. And just because I like how much it looks. Now, every Game Boy Color is special. I don't think anyone is gonna deny that. I think everyone loves the Game Boy Color in some way, shape or form, but for me, right here. Lime green is the number one color. All right, sticking in the Game Boy family, and we are going to jump up to the Game Boy Advance SP. I did not buy a Game Boy Advance when it first launched. It was not a console that I was really excited for. I was kind of I was too old for handheld gaming at that point. It wasn't something I was interested in picking up, but when they showed off the Game Boy Advance SP, it piqued my interest because I loved the idea of having that clamshell design to protect the screens, and the one that I really wanted, I got, and that's this guy right here. This is the NES version of the GBA SP. Now, there's a lot to dislike about this with regards to the fact that it doesn't have the backlit screen, and I am very reluctant to modify this one just because of how valuable it is now. I don't want something bad to happen to it. But there's so much to like about it. I love that the speaker is front and center on the console, so you're going to get the music right in your face at all times. And I just, I love the look of it. Like, Nintendo going back to the classic NES design is just chef's kiss perfect. The last handheld on the list is... Uh, not this 3DS, actually. I love this 3DS, don't get me wrong. This is my this is my everyday carry. This is my 3DS. This is my system. It's the one I like the most. It's the one I put the most hours into, but I think the most visually stunning member of the 3DS family is the Hylian Shield 2DS. Now, this is my wife's machine. This thing is unbelievable. Like, I just, I prefer the 2DS anyway. Like, I don't ever use the 3D technology on the 3DS. It just doesn't work for me. It gives me a headache. So I don't know why I never bought a 2DS, but... I really like this one. The The fact that everything on it is raised, so you actually have like a Triforce that's raised up. I like that the shoulder buttons are bronze as opposed to just being silver. There's so many nice accents and just different ways to look at this console that just mean a ton to me. I think it is a beautiful, stunning piece. I think it is the best looking handheld Nintendo's ever made, not counting the Famicom GBA Micro, which is like my ultimate holy grail Nintendo handheld. I desperately want to get one of those. We had one when I worked at EA and I really wanted to get it because we didn't do any Game Boy Advance development at the time. We just had it in QA. And I wish I had snacked on the way out the door because that thing was stunning. Okay, up next, we are moving on to home consoles, actual ones that you play on your television. And the first one that I grabbed is this beautiful little box right here, the Nintendo GameCube. There is so much that I love about this system. I love the front plate being an offset color, so it stands out from everything else. Like, the only one it doesn't really stand out on is the Platinum, and that's okay. I like that the jewel was interchangeable on the top. I love the handle. And I just think that this does so much with such a small footprint on your entertainment center. When I look at stuff today, like, the PS5 and the Series X, which are both systems that I really like. I don't particularly care for the design of the PS5, but they're systems that I love, but they're so massive. And I understand that they had to be that big to fit stuff in there, but when I think of the positive gaming experiences I have with this guy right here and the, like, you know, the Game Boy player being on the bottom, just sitting flush with it and looking perfect, it's those small little attentions to detail that Nintendo does that just mean so much to me that I appreciate. I am not often a victim of collector's edition consoles just because I don't, I don't know, it just doesn't do anything for me. I've owned a few, obviously I've got some for handhelds, but for home consoles that operate off my television, typically not, but there have been a couple great exceptions to that. One would be my Uncharted PS4 that unfortunately I got rid of because the thing was just a hunk of junk. It did not work well for me, it crashed constantly, I upgraded to the white PS4 Pro that looks like a wedding cake. That one's not on this list. But what one is on this list is this beautiful guy right here, the R2-D2 Xbox 360. Now there is, God, there's just so much to love about this. The fact that it looks like an R2 unit is amazing. The blue and white just is so visually stunning and just looks incredible. And the fact that there are little Easter eggs all throughout the entire thing, like. 
when you eject it, it makes R2 sounds. And granted, that's not a visual thing, that's a sound, but the fact that there's an Easter egg on the disc tray that says, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope to simulate Leia's holographic message to Obi-Wan is just... Man, the attention to detail in this thing is just incredible. It is one of the most visually stunning systems out there. Uh, it came with a Kinect sensor, it came with Star Wars Kinect, which is a mixed bag of a game, to say the least, and so much that it's a mixed bag of crap. But it also came with this guy, the C-3PO controller. So it's a full droid setup, and granted, yeah, this isn't what the console looks like, but it's too cool to not call out, right? Like, this thing is just stunning. Hey, if you're digging this, look at my consoles real quick. Why don't you hit that subscribe button down below? Love to have you stick around. I'm always talking retro and modern games, and hey, I would love to have you kick the tires on the channel for a little bit. All right, begging forgiveness here because I'm gonna be showing off some mini consoles here because I do not have originals of this hardware. Up first, we have the Sega Genesis Mark I. Now, this is a beautiful console. This was my 16-bit system when I was a kid. This is the one that I was just immediately drawn to, that I fell in love with, and there, this thing feels like something out of Epcot to me. It's got the dome where the game goes in. It's got the volume slider where you can plug your headphones in. The on-off toggle switch that is raised up from the console as opposed to just being a part of it. The reset button, that's a different color. There's so much that this thing does well. And it just feels, it feels a little sinister, right? Like it's blacks and reds and silvers. It feels like Darth Vader's console. And that was so appealing to me. Like this was just something that this was when I was getting from being a kid to being a teenager. I was in that tween age when I was like, oh, I want to be cool. I want to be edgy. And this was it. Like, this was the one. This does what Nintendo don't. I bought, man, hook, line, and sinker. I was down for this thing. And I just love the look of this. And there was so much that you could do with it. Adding the Tower of Power, putting on the 32X and the Sega CD, which made it just look absolutely outlandish. But that's okay, because it was just... It's just the brand, man. The Genesis was an outlandish console, and it just like leaned hardcore into that behavior and into that kind of that Bart Simpson look of look at life of how to how to go about things and how to talk about things. And I love this console. Next up, another mini console, and this is representative of the full size version, and it is the Super Nintendo. Now there's something clean and classic about this one. Uh, I prefer the Japanese Super Famicom or the European Super Nintendo release. I just think it looks better. I like the colors on the console better. But this one, the purples and grays work. Like, I really liked the gigantic eject button and that if you mashed that thing, the games would go flying out of it. The reset button and the power button were great, having just that little slide on the top. And this just feels like Nintendo to me. This feels like Nintendo updating their design standards from the classic NES to something new for the North American audience with this design. And I really liked it. Like, I like the, I even like the controller ports kind of being that weird rectangle with a rounded edge. I thought that was really neat. And I don't know, this one just this one just appeals to me, like dramatically appeals to me. I loved the look of this one. I liked it when it launched, but I was more into the Genesis. But as I've gotten older, the appreciation for the look of the Super Nintendo is massive. Okay, now this one, I don't know how people are going to react to this one. Because I know a lot of people just think it isn't, there isn't a terribly inspired design. But there's so much that I love about the Sega Dreamcast's look. If I had to pick, I would probably choose the Sega Sports version, the black release, just because it's so pretty. Or I would go with one of the aftermarket cases that you can put on it with the red translucence. Check out Gary from Rock Solid Productions' video about that to see more about it. But I really like this one. Like, this, to me, looks like it belongs on a Gundam. Like, this is something I would find in Macross or something like that. Like, I love the circle. I love the logo, the swirl logo that the Dreamcast has. I love the triangle down here, the power indicator. The front ports are great. The flap as it opens up, allowing you to put the disc in, the power button here. There's just so much that I love about this one, and I love the design of it. I think this is one of Sega's... It's definitely one of their more understated consoles. Like, the Saturn was still a little edgy, a little bit different. But this one right here, the Dreamcast, is understated, but to me, it feels futuristic. It, all right, next up for me, one of my favorite looks for a Nintendo console is the Fantastic Green N64. Now, why do I love this one so much? It's pretty simple. I love the simple low profile of it. I like that it kind of looks like a race car or like an F-Zero machine. Like, I look at it like this, and I see, like, these are the boosters in the back, and to me, it's just cool. Like. There's something to be said about the Fantastic designs. I love the Fantastic colors. Translucent plastic, I'm a sucker for. What's up, Dan Larson over at Toy Galaxy? Right there with you, buddy. And I just think that there's something about this console and how it comes together that just works so well. Like, you can say a lot about the look of the controller with the Trident, and I understand everything you say about it is a warranted and justified statement. But the console itself, 
I think looks great. It's sleek, it's simple, it's the first Nintendo console that really embraced curved lines as opposed to just hard edges. The Super Nintendo had a little bit more curves than the NES, obviously the NES was a toaster, but this one really kind of leaned in, like everything's rounded. This was their dedication to 3D graphics and smoothing things out and bringing things more to life in the games was reflected in the design of the console, and I don't think that can be ignored. All right, and uh, two weeks ago when I first thought about doing this video, it was... Uh, the, the last entry on this list was going to be my Sharp Twin Famicom, but I, I have acquired something since then that bumps the Twin Famicom out of the way, and it is a Sega Master System. Now, the Sega Master System is a thing of beauty. It is awesome angular lines all over the place. I love the red graphics on the body of the machine. The Model 1 version of the Master System is stunning buttons and just letters and callouts. It's so different than anything I had ever seen before and anything I would have experienced at the time. And to this day, it's a visual dynamo. The machine is a thing of beauty, an absolute study in 80s design aesthetics, and it is perfect in my eyes. All right, guys, there you have it. My 10 favorite design consoles that I have in my collection currently. There are definitely things I don't own that I would add to this list. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite of my consoles is that I showed off today, as well as what your favorite console design is that you have in your collection. Please hit like, please subscribe down below if you're new around here. And hey, if you dig the work I do, consider becoming a monthly Patreon sponsor or channel member like the folks you're seeing on screen right now. Channel members and patrons get ad-free early access to videos for a donation of as little as $1 a month. If you want to continue to support the channel further, please check out my merchandise store at squarepegsyt.com where you can pick up clothing, mugs, masks, pretty much anything. If I can slap a logo on it, I'm going to sell it over there. Until next time, folks, I've been Jay. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. Check out these other videos up here if you want to see more of my work. And remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.